Hi Lisa. Hi. Remember I had this problem with matrix effect decreasing my method's process efficiency? Yes. How did it go with optimizing the sample preparation method? I tried an additional sample preparation step and the matrix effect did improve. However, the recoveries uh, started to decrease, so I didn't see any significant improvement in the overall process efficiency. Okay. So I also tried the sample dilution mm -hmm. and I got different results for different matrices. Okay. For example, the tomato and cucumber matrices had matrix effect close to 100% mm -hmm. for all analytes. But from apples, I observed considerable matrix effect even in the diluted samples. Well, the matrix components for these samples are quite different, so the matrix effects may also vary. But did you observe any improvement in matrix effect for the apple samples as well? Yes, in general I did. But the late eluding samples still have uh, unacceptable matrix effect. Well, if you can't improve matrix effect any further with optimizing the method parameters, then you could try out accounting for matrix effect. For example, you could use extrapolative dilution. What is this extrapolative dilution? Well, you remember that I told you last time about analyzing your sample twice. This extrapolative dilution is a very similar approach. You prepare several dilutions of your samples, analyze these, and correlate the obtained analyte concentration with the dilution factor. And if you observe a linear correlation between the analyte concentration and the dilution factor, then you can extrapolate the analyte concentration to the infinite dilution meaning to the situation where you do not have any coeluting matrix components. Okay, it sounds interesting. But are there any additional methods I can use to take the matrix effect into account? Well, isotopically labeled internal standards are very powerful. Do you have isotopically labeled standards available for your analytes? Well, you know I have a lot of analytes. So I don't think it would be economically possible to buy them all right now. Okay, but you mentioned that you have the unacceptable uh, matrix effect for the late eluting compounds. Maybe it's w it would be possible to use uh, isotopically labeled internal standards for these compounds. Yes, I could try this. But could I also use structurally similar internal standards? Well. You know that the internal standard is only affected by the matrix components that coelute with it. So for isotopically labeled internal standards that coelute with the analyte, the analyte and internal standard are influenced by the mat same matrix components. But the structure analogs may elute quite far away from your analyte, so the analyte and uh, structurally similar internal standard may be influenced by different matrix components and therefore it may not account for matrix effect. Mm -hmm. But I've read that standard addition has also been used to correct the analysis results. Could I use this maybe? Well, first standard addition is only useful if the matrix effect is independent of analyte concentration. And there have been contradictory examples in the literature for this. Secondly, you need to carry out at least four additions to obtain a linear graph and increase your analyte signal two to five times with the addition. And as you usually don't know the analyte concentration in the sample be before, then you probably need to make a test run to obtain the concentration of analyte for which you need to carry out the addition. Well, I don't think this could work for me because I have large batches of samples to be analyzed routinely. So I think I'll try the extrapolative dilution and the isotopically labeled internal standards. But oh, this matrix effect seems like a tough nut to crack. Well, I'm sure you can find the solution to this problem. Good luck.